Hey guys, and welcome to chapter two of the test automation course in Python. My name is Carlos Kidman, and in this chapter, we're gonna be focusing on your first Selenium test. This is going to set us up real nicely for the rest of the chapters where we dive into a lot more complexity. Again, I'm assuming that you guys know about Selenium, and so I just wanna make sure we're on the same page with getting it set up so we can write some tests with it. So let's do this thing. I'm gonna start where we left off in chapter one, where we just barely finished writing our first Pi tests. So to write some Selenium stuff, uh, we're gonna to need to set up a few things. First one is we need to install Selenium. So I'm gonna open up my terminal, and inside of here on pip, install Selenium. Single command and A, let's go, we got that going. The next thing I need to do is to make sure we have a Chrome driver. So there's multiple ways to install this. I myself am on my Mac, so I'm going to do it uh, kind of the, the Mac way, if you will, but there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, if you just Google like install Chrome driver or download Chrome driver, you'll find a lot of ways. If you're on a Mac like myself, I can just use brew install Chrome driver. And this will actually install Chrome driver for me and put it into my path so that way I can actually access it. Whoops, and it's right, I need to do brew cask install Chrome driver, my bad. Let's run that instead. Then we can make sure we got the latest one, Chrome driver version. And there we go, version 76, which is the one that we want. At least as of the time of this recording, of course. <laughs> Okay, next up, let's make our test. Now, right now we have test challenge one. Um, I'm gonna right click, or chapter one, excuse me, and this will be test underscore chapter two dot py. Okay, now let's expand this up a little bit so we can see. Let's do def, we're gonna say test a Google search. It's like the hello world of test automation, right? First thing I want to do is set up my driver. Driver is what's going to be walking across the pages, basically doing the actions on the website. So driver equals webdriver.chrome. Now it's mad at us currently saying, hey, what the heck is webdriver? Well, we can figure it out. Say import this name, and it's coming from, look at all these different web drivers that you have access to, which is pretty sweet. But in this case, we actually want this last one. Notice how when I hit that, it imports it for me automatically and now we have a Chrome driver. Now, if I list out my steps for the things I want to be doing, I wanna say step one is go to google.com. Uh, step two would be um, type in a search. And let's say we're gonna type in puppies, because puppies are just so darn cute. Step three, we're going to submit or enter the search, execute it basically. And then step four, assert we landed on a search page, or we got, let me do that, assert we got a search page for puppies. So let's go to a browser, and let's go to google.com. Okay, now I'm going to right-click on this and inspect it. All right, let's clean some stuff up here real quick. I want to bring up my console just a tad. Here we go. And now here, if I hover over this, notice how this input element, which is highlighted, is highlighting the left-hand side over here as well. So this is the element we want to grab. Now, um, you'll be doing lots of locating elements or finding elements on the pages. That's the bread and butter of Selenium. So here, what I'm going to do for the sake of the demo is show you that this attribute name has a unique value of Q. So I'm actually going to be using this right here. So if we go back to our test, step one is go to Google. So let's do that, driver.get, and we'll pass in the URL, which is https slash google.com. That's step one. For step two, we wanted to input a search, and we found that element with the name of Q. So driver.findElement by dot, and then we used name, and the name was Q. Now it's gonna be mad about by because it doesn't know what it is. So if I 
open up that context menu, you'll actually see that it wants me to import this. So let's do it. And now that error is resolved. Now that I have this element, I can do a dot right afterward. And what can I do with an element? Well, one of the things I can do is send keys or enter in text. So here we go. We want to enter the text of puppies. Step two is now done. For step three, we want to submit or uh, enter the search, execute the search now that we've typed in puppies. So the first thing you would do is probably find this Google search and then right click on this and inspect it, right? This is the one that we want. Now what's interesting is if I type in the word puppies, you'll see that button actually gets hidden by this menu, right? And another Google search button appears. So for the sake of the demo, if you try to find this element and just click on it, it actually probably wouldn't work because of this menu that you see that covers it. It would actually get in front of the click so you wouldn't be clicking the right button. Fortunately, we know that this element is an input element with a type of submit. So we can actually submit on this as well. Another cool thing is that the name is also unique. The name has BTNK, which seems pretty darn unique for the page. And we can confirm this obviously inside of here. If I wanted to do, let's do some CSS. And I said, give me the button that has the name of BTNK. There we go. I hover over it here and then we actually get that button, which is pretty nice. So let's go back to code and let's say driver dot find element. We got this one by name as well. And here is BTNK with a capital K. Don't want to mess that up. And then we'll submit. And now step three is done. The last thing you want to do is assert that we got the puppies search page, right? So let me execute the search and just click Google search. And now we're here and there's lots of ways that we can actually see that we're on puppies. Um, but for the sake of the demo, we'll look at this title here and the title itself has puppies in it. If we were to search something else, um, like let's say we searched uh, little kittens because oh, so cute too, you'll see the title has changed to kittens as well. So we know that we're on a puppies page if puppies is inside of the title. So let's assert that behavior. We'll go back to code here. And now I'm going to use the keyword assert. And then we're going to say that puppies I put poopies. Puppies is in driver.title. And we've completed our first test. But you can't just take my word for it, of course. Let's run it and see what happens. So I'm going to click this play button. It's going to spin up and it should switch over. And now we have a new Chrome browser. Type in puppies, search it up, and there we go. One test passed. Switch back over to our code. And yay, everything passed, yay, in 8.39 seconds. All right, so this definitely feels good, of course. Like, yay, we wrote our first Selenium test, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, but we're now going to start writing our tests against an actual application. Uh, this was, again, like the Hello World example. But now we're actually going to be doing it against a site. So here, we'll go into our browser, and we're going to type in statsroyale.com. This is a fun game. Uh, I don't play it myself, but it's a very popular game. Uh, it's a card game, but like a virtual card game, which is pretty cool. So uh, what we want to do is go to statsroyale.com. Then we'll click on this cards link right here. It'll navigate us to this page, which is the cards page. And then you'll see a bunch of different cards. There's a lot of cards that are within this game. What we want to do is to assert that this guy right here, Ice Spirit, is displayed. So I right click and inspect on him and we'll see something unique here um, or we'll see something that's actually not as unique. I mean, we we see some elements here, but it might be a little more difficult. The Google side was easier because everything had a unique name or ID where here we don't have any name. We don't have any ID. So we're going to be forced to use CSS or XPath, but we'll get to that here soon. So let's go back over to our code. And I'm now going to make a new file and we'll call this one test underscore cards dot py. This is going to represent uh, the cards and cards page as well. And I'm just going to grab real quick everything here. Just quick command A, command C, back to cards, command V. And now we can go to this line and instead of google.com, we're going to go to statsroyale.com. <laughs> dot com dot com. So step one is go to statsroyale.com change that here too. 
perfect. Step two is not to type in puppies, but to go to cards page. And then step three is actually our assertion. So here, let's assert I spirit is displayed. So we don't need any of this anymore. You don't need that step. On line seven, it's mad at me because it's like, hey, this is a typo. Is this even a word? And I'm like, yes, you are the typo. So we'll save that so we get rid of that error. So now here, go to cards page. Obviously, this line doesn't work because the cards, we don't want to input puppies into our cards link. So let's find this element. Scroll up to the top, and here's our cards link. So let's inspect on this first. And if you want to take a sec and pause the video and see if you can find it by yourself, awesome. Otherwise, we'll just work on it together. Looking through this, the first thing I see that looks unique to me would be the href and the text of cards as well. Now, there are quite a few strategies here for how you can handle that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the href of cards. So let's go in here and I'm going to use CSS. Um, so href equals slash cards and I got my link there we go so if I click on this it's going to take me to this page and you probably didn't see it so I'll, I'll go to like a different one let's say I go to guides um, and then I'll try it here click and now you see it actually navigate to the cards page so that's the one that I'm wanting uh, so if I push up arrow you'll actually see this sweet I'm gonna copy this from quote to quote copy that go back in here and I use instead of name I actually use CSS and then I can replace this with the string that I used and instead of stop send keys we just needed to click on it and now step two is done step three kind of has two steps involved because we need to find the ice spirit card and then assert that it's displayed so let's go back into here and right click on ice spirit we'll inspect it and like I said this one's a little more difficult Right? We want to make sure that it's clickable. So even though we have this text of I spirit, we can't actually click on this div. It doesn't do anything if we interact with it. So we actually want the A or image element. And I'm going to go for this href here. Now this is a long, long href. Some people may actually grab this whole thing and HTTPS, that's rail.com slash card slash I spirit. They may grab that. But if you think about it, we can actually go with this, the href, and this star equals, right, asterisk equals, this means contains. What I want to do is I want to get the href that contains the word ice spirit. So I'm going to put ice plus spirit, just like it shows here, ice plus spirit. And let's see what we get back. And sure enough, we found it. Yay. And if I do a dot click on this, we can see it takes us to the next page. So that is for sure the element that we are wanting. So I'll go back one more page. Let's do up arrow so I can see what I got. And it was this quote to this quote. Let me copy this. Switch back over to code. And I'm going to replace this BTNK with this. Now we're not clicking. We're just grabbing the element and checking that it's displayed. So I'm actually going to hold this element into a variable. And I'm going to call this ice spirit card is equal to the element that we find. Now we can assert that the ice spirit card dot is displayed. Test is now done. Let's make sure that we can run it, of course. So I ran the test and the first error I got was actually this, no such element exception, but we made for sure that that was the element that we needed, right? We confirmed it inside the console. And here it says we're unable to locate the element with the CSS selector. If we look at the CSS selector, we can see that, wait a second, this isn't what I copied and pasted in. I copied href star equals I spirit, but this included name. Well, that's because right here on line 14, we didn't change this from name to CSS selector. So let's change that real quick, and that would fix that error. So we're actually using the error to tell us what we need to fix. Now we can run the test again and let's see what we get. Beauty, one test pass. We go back and sure enough, iSpirit 
is displayed. So we'll close that now and that way you can see the rest of the file. But hopefully you saw that kind of what I did was I organized my logic, kind of my thought process and user steps uh, into these comments. You know, line 7, 10, and 13 are just comments for what I'm going to be doing, the steps I need to take to complete this action, right? Um, the name right now is Google Search, and I'm going to change this to say, test that iSpirit is displayed. Now, hopefully everything around this test is pretty straightforward and clear. If you guys have any questions, hit me up, of course. But I think we're done with this test and this chapter. Of course, to make sure that you guys understood it fully, we got a couple challenges for you. So challenge number one is, what about Lava Golem? There's a bunch of other cards on the page, and right now we're only testing Ice Spirit. So for this challenge, write another test that asserts that Lava Golem is displayed. You're going to start seeing some patterns as you do this that, well, we're copying a lot of code, right? Ponder about that one a little bit. The next challenge, number two, is poor little ice spirit is just a common card. For this challenge, you need to write a new test that unchecks the common filter at the top of the page and then assert that ice spirit is no longer displayed. So you're going to be removing the common filter and all common cards should be removed from the page. Hopefully that test is something that you guys can do on your own. Of course, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact me either by email at carlos at qap.dev or my preferred method via Twitter or LinkedIn at Carlos Kidman. Always feel free to uh, send me your code examples as well. So if you have something on GitHub, I would love to see it uh, and just send those repos to me that way. And I can even do code reviews with you as well. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great night and happy testing.